And the saga continues on. Who is the greatest villain of them all? As we're gonna go through a bundle episode, so not every video is gonna have one individual. And so for this video, we're gonna do these guys. Cue the music. Hello, and welcome to this part of the pond, where it's the bullfrog and the one, the only, Newt. Base reveal at 100,000 subscribers. We would love this, the subscribers. Any channel would like to have those subscribers. And when you see that face, ladies, I am so sorry, but the Newt is married. That's how you earn points with the uh, social media advisor. <laughs> well, other than basking the editor and cameraman and almost every man of this channel aside, we're gonna see who's the worst of the worst, who has the blackest of hearts through formula not by poll or opinion. We want to know who is that and how is through this formula from the mathematical side, which is this, and the essay side, which is this. If you want to get to know more about the details and the nitty gritty of this, try this video right here, link in the description. <laughs> So we're going to begin with this Zeus, and we're going to begin with his design. And I, the grays and blues is true to what he is, the god of storms, the god of lightning. I can tell that this Disney is not doing the awesome muscular side that is Zeus. They're doing the uh, quagmire Zeus, because giddy, 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 people, Zeus is that guy. I see you. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. Would you like to know my secret identity? It is the, the god of storms. Yeah, baby. This, is, this Zeus is almost the Barry White edition. More emphasis on the white than Barry. Because this Zeus is more meant to be beautiful. Honestly, as beautiful as he is, he's not beautiful, beautiful. He doesn't really out. And yes, he may have the physique of a Greek god. Doesn't mean it's not that good in his favor. So he's gonna get a one. Now this may hurt a lot. What am I saying, May? And now we get into his presence. And with his presence, there's a build up to it. The changing of the sky, the onslaught of rain, and the wind, which is not him, but two faces blowing, made out of cloud. Yeah. And then he opens up and with that big giant hello of a face. This is your presence? And for each individual character that we are overanalyzing, we're going to do a timer. So that way, in the free-for-all, we can compare everyone's time to help us whittle this down. And for time, we're going to go to our handy-dandy notebook. And Zeus's time, well, Zeus and Orpheus, it's actually one minute and five, estimated. Well, the storm is an extension of him and his power, so I had to time the storm as well. And the storm was one minute and five. 54 seconds of rain and lightning. Um, your power is in longer than you. I know we're saving this mainly for the free for all, but that seems a little off to me. You, Newt? Your powers are in longer than you, but you wield the powers? That's almost like saying, oh, pull this up on screen, Newt. Let's you throw in the Emperor from Star Wars. So well, for the Emperor is gonna be presence on screen, two thirds of his time is dedicated to his lightning hands. And then him for one third of the time. That is not good. 
That's not a way how to design a villain. That's not the way how to do a villain. So his presence is going to be a one. Ouch. Now this may hurt a lot. <gasps> what am I saying, May? And then we have to get into power. This is where our Greek god does come in handy. Zeus's power is rain, storm, and lightning. And lightning is what it is. Lightning. Death defying and terrible. And also he has Orpheus that is making the lightning and he can just grab it and throw it. What they show me, this is going to be, his power is very small. Vast and powerful rain, storm, and lightning. And being a Greek god, he's immortal. And having a, a henchman Orpheus, who's also immortal. So honestly, this gives him a two. But you need to talk about henchmen, because we see it in this. Orpheus is the blacksmith god. And Orpheus creates the lightning for Zeus. And why is this so important to why Orpheus is not going to help Zeus at all is that Zeus is over-dependent on him. How can you be the god of lightning when you don't have lightning? Someone else is making it. I, in order to be who I am, uh, Orpheus, do I need you? Dude, I need you. C dude, get, I need you. Heck, let's use the clip from the Hercules movie, Newt. Did you hear that? And this show shows it in Fantasia that Zeus is dependent on Orpheus drastically. You can't ha have lightning when you can't use lightning. Orpheus is loyal, absolutely loyal. But Zeus is too dependent on him. Without Orpheus, you have no lightning. I'm sorry. You may want Orpheus as a henchman, but you don't want to be over-dependent to the point that you're almost a handicap yourself. So Orpheus, as a henchman, gets a one. Ouch. Now this may hurt a lot. <laughs> what am I saying, May? Ow! And let's talk about ouch with Axe of Villainy. And this is gonna hurt our big boy. This is a short. Yeah, he won't be as, in as much, but the Axe of Villainy must mean for something, right? Remember that estimated time in presence? Newt, can you pull it up? Yeah. So his acts of villainy must really stand out, right? What does he do? He rains on that, uh... He rains on that party. Literally. He... So this makes Zeus almost like a jerk more than a villain. What are we gonna do? I'm, we're gonna crash a party, people! Let's do this, all right? Hand me the lightning. We're going to aim it at, where's Deniosius? Here he is. I mean, getting his name wrong. I'm not as versed in Greek mythology. Sorry, but where's the wine god? There he is. Let's lightning the guy that is immortal. That is a Greek god. And let's use another quote from Her Disney's Hercules. The one about Hades and the riddle. Got a little riddle for you. How do you kill a god? You can't. They're immortal? Bingo! So it means nothing. You're using your villainy to achieve nothing. You're just not... You're being a jerk, almost a dork. This is Zeus, the god of gods, the god of storms and lightning. And what's he being? I'm being that nerdy of a jerk that crashes the party and talks to everyone and leaves. And what does he do at the end? What does he do at the end? He just reclines back in his cloud and just takes that nap. Soft as a cloud. Orpheus, you can throw a lightning bolt. After all, I may be the god of lightning. You are the god of lightning. Do what you want. I'm done. And then he's done. That's it. That's your acts of villainy? That is what you achieve is absolutely nothing. This acts of villainy proves it. Zeus from Fantasia, you are a low green. How about that? The first green 
of us going through this ends up being the Greek God and the big God. Huh. Let's see how Monstro favors. So now let's get into Monstro. One of the most notable names in Pinocchio. When we say villain, two names come to mind. Stromboli and Monstro the Whale. And to be honest, Pinocchio is a literary book. As much as I trashed the book author through the coachman, because that was a dark place, people. Monstro is the, only, is the second whale of literature that we know by name. Other than Monstro, it's Moby Dick. And Moby Dick is more prominent, but Monstro is still a name. And let's begin with his design. And his design is simple and interesting in a way. Looks like he's the size of a blue whale. Has that almost face structure of it. But yet he's also has the teeth and jaws of a predator. Like a sperm whale. So, if anyone asks you the riddle, uh, what would the spawn of a blue whale and a sperm whale would look like? Just pull up Monstro. But yeah, that's the desi Monstro's design. It's kind of, there's no to it. But yet it's interesting, somewhat imaginative, but not good enough. So Monstro's design, look, it's almost looking like it could be a one, and it could be however. Monster is one of the very, very rare few Disney villains that has an unfair advantage. His teeth and insides. The inside of Monstro is a set. His teeth is a set and a gate to that new set. So there's a multi-dimension to Monstro's design from the sperm blue whale that you see that looks like a demon. Not, not really demonic, but still intimidating. And the teeth is the gateway. When closed, you have to knock on it like Jiminy Cricket does. When they open, it's to another design and world where people can live in. And according to the design, and let's have Geppetto say it. Then everything comes. Out. Yeah. Monstro's design is almost godlike. Other than thou shalt die and go to hell, it's as I open my mouth and partake of feast, thou shalt eat. But as I rest and close my mouth, thou shalt starve. Yeah, these. The design of Monstro is actually multi-layered. So that puts Monstro's design up to a two. Who knew? And now we go through presence. And Monstro's presence is echoed before you meet him because of Jiminy Cricket. Pinocchio comes home and he's going, where's dad? They don't know where he is. The blue fairy sends that dove and they read the letter and put and Jiminy Cricket knows of Monstro. What's this Monstro? I've heard of him. He's a whale of a whale. He can swallow ships whole. And you see it in the set design in his stomach. He can swallow ships whole. So there's that buildup of a presence to what Monstro is. This godlike figure. When you see meet Monstro, it's that Still, it's, not, it's something that's not moving, which is almost unnatural for a whale. And then the belch of bubbles. He opens his eye, sees fish, and he rushes out to open the gates that is his mouth. Thou shalt eat. Monstro's presence is all in the visual. And... Let's be honest, people. It's a pretty good visual. And it kind of says that his presence is good. Not amazing, but still, you got to talk about it. And it's a three. And to check Monstro's estimated time in presence, we're going to go to our handy-dandy notebook. 
Oh, notebook. And for Monstro, ooh, estimated time is three minutes and 12 seconds. Huh. And he's one of two characters you could, as a villain, that comes to mind immediately. This is more meant for the free-for-all, but still. Did better than some other characters. Can't wait for the free-for-all to see how he handles things. And now, Monstro's power. We kind of talked about it in his design. Is the fact that his power is almost godlike. He can swallow a ship whole, and now you're under his subject. You're now under the worship of Monstro. As I shall eat, thy shall eat. As I shall rest, thou shalt starve. Kind of putting it in a lot more epic in power. <laughs> and he can tear down ships. Geppetto was just one. There's one of many more. So honestly, it's... How many ships has he torn down to get a reputation? How many survivors can there be? There's enough to give him a name, but enough to give him fear. Monstro's power is a three. And now, Monstro's acts of villainy. And again, I've talked about it a lot with his design and with his power, but it has to be established. Monstro is a godlike figure. Again, what I've just said a lot, but yet it is part of his acts of villainy. His mouth is the gate. His stomach is a world. He prowls the oceans, eating up ships and fish. All the fish in the ocean fear him. Fish don't speak, but just say the name, Monstro. Fish flee. They don't speak, but yet they know the name. As Monstro rests, he looks like nothing but a rock. He waits, sees a school, and he opens his mouth to eat them. And his mouth is a gate. Monstro the whale becomes Monstro the world. Almost like they did in uh, Kingdom Hearts, the first game. Monstro is a world. You can, so you cannot really say I'm pulling that out of my wazoo. Like I've been saying a lot, Monstro is thy god. It's almost like you can have a book of Monstro, though it may be a few pages. Actually, let's see, you're in the book of Monstro. Chapter one, verse one. And my mouth shall be thy gate. Who shall enter shall be mine. Who shall not shall die. Hmm. Kind of goes on in that eerie tone that his mouth is the gate. All shall enter, shall not leave. And all shall know that I shall eat, thou shalt live. I shall rest, thou shalt stop. Huh. How does it work? A little depressing. Let's put that author's name again. You're putting me in places I never thought possible. The coachman. That was a dark place. Monstro. I never thought I'd be quoting a book that's not, that's non-existent. Huh. Maybe I need to give this author a little bit of credit, though he's sending me to a twisted place I never thought possible. So, Monstro's acts of villainy puts him in a unique spot. But, we get, there's one thing that's stopping Monstro. He's acting as an instinct of an animal. Monstro is a whale, relying on animal instincts. He eats because he eats. He's not... When a villain is a villain, and being, in, and being part of the acts of villainy, there's reason, there's rhyme, there's cruel and evil. Monstro is the apex predator of apex predators. He eats because he needs to eat. He rests because he needs to rest. The world around him is nothing, but he's still an animal. There's no dark cunning nor brilliant mind, and that puts him down. Any villain that kind of has that tendency to be an animal hurts them, because there's 
other villains that Disney has made that are animals that don't rely on animal instincts. There's a cunning to them. That gives them over the edge. Hence why when we say how an animal instincts don't help you, is because you're from Disney. There's gotta be more cunning. If you're just acting like an animal, I'm gonna treat you like an animal. So Monstro, you're a low yellow. It's not your fault, but it's not your fault. You're just an animal. Well, until then, and our next video of ranking character villains, it's the Bullfrog and the Newt signing out. <laughs>